Okay, hello, and um, I'm going to uh, just give you some instructions on doing this lab, um, Foundations for Statistical Inference Sampling Distributions. And, uh, and for this thing, we'll look at uh, some real estate data from the city of Ames, Iowa. And this contains basically every single home sale, residential home sale between the years 2006 and 2010. And to, uh, to conduct this, we're going to, you know, use this command that says download.file. And here I've just kind of copied and pasted that command into R. And I'll go ahead and I will run that command. And this has downloaded the data set. And now I will load the data into R using uh, load aims.rdata. So I'll type in load aims R data. Okay, so it has loaded, and we can see that I have my data set here, 2,930 observations of 82 variables, and it also contains a couple functions here, which is fine. And um, there's 82 variables, and we can look at all 82 variables by typing in names of aims, and it includes things like the order, the PID, uh, lot dot frontage, lot dot area, street, alley, all of this kind of stuff. And the things that we're going to be interested in will be the square footage of the house, okay, which is going to be gr dot lib dot area, ground living area. So basically the square footage of the house. And then we will also look at the sale price. And we're going to store these into um, basically two objects, one called area and one called called price so that we don't have to keep typing out the whole thing. So we're going to say um, area is going to be aims dollar sign ground dot living area and then we'll have price which will be aims dollar sign sale sale price okay and so these are the objects that we've created area and price and it says, let's take a look at the distribution of area and population by creating kind of some summary statistics and making a histogram. So um, we'll do summary of area. And it says the mean is 1,500, the median is 1,442, third quartile is 1,743, and first quartile is 1,126, all right, with a max of 5,642. In a minimum of 334, let's create a histogram of area. And let's take a look at our plot here. And our histogram certainly looks right skewed, OK? Um, we can increase uh, the number of breaks. Let's do breaks equals 20 or something like that. All right, and yeah, and we can see, you know, most houses have between around somewhere between 900 and 2,000 square feet. That covers, you know, the vast majority of houses. And then, yeah, we've got some houses with over 2,000 square feet. You know, once you start getting past 2,500, there's fewer and fewer and fewer houses. And, yeah, there's a few houses with over 3,000 square feet, over 4,000 square feet, over 5,000 square feet, Just, but just not very many of them. Okay, on the other hand, down on the lower end, you, once you get down, looks like 700-ish square feet, we don't have very many houses with um, square footage smaller than that. Um, so those things um, represent the population. That represents the population for area. And what we want to do is we want to explore the sampling distribution for a sample, okay? And um, the idea here is that we want to know what values of sample means are likely versus unlikely, okay? And so in order to do this, we will use a function called sample, which randomly draws values from something, um, and we provide it area. So right now, area, we're going to call this sample 1. So if I do sample area, comma 50, this means uh, area has 2,930 values in it, and this says select 50 values at random from those 2,930. And so the, here are 
50 random values. If I run it again, it's going to select another set of 50 random values out of the 2930, okay? Uh, so we will just do this, and I will call this SAMP1. And let's create a histogram of SAMP1. Okay, and so when I create this histogram, we get um, kind of like a small-ish version. Let me just add a few more breaks. Breaks equals 20. And um, it doesn't quite look the same, but uh, it's like... If we look at the the larger histogram where we have fewer bins, we still see kind of most values are between 1,000 and 2,000. Some are a little bit larger, and it's right skewed, and we do have some that are between 500 and 1,000. And so when we take a random sample of 50, we get something that kind of looks like the population, but not exactly. And that's that's what we would expect, okay? Says describe the distribution of the sample. Sure, it kind of looks like the population, um, but um, with uh, with just fewer values. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to find the mean of the sample. So we have sample one, which has 50 values in it. Now I'm going to say mean of sample one, and the mean of sample one is 1,624. Okay. If we go back to the summary of area, the mean of all 2,930 is 1,500. When we took 50 random values, we got a sample mean of 1,624. And we can go through and we can see, like, what if um, I wanted to take another sample, right? So let's take another sample of size 50 and call it sample 2. How does the mean of sample 2 compare with the mean of sample 1? So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm just going to go in and I'll say sample area, take a sample of size 50. So if I take a look at sample 2, it looks like that. And let's ask, what's the mean of sample 2? So the mean of these values is 1,565. So it's a little bit different. It's about uh, 60 points smaller, 60 square feet smaller than the mean of sample one, okay? But it's still bigger than the mean of the entire population. And this is just because it's a random sample. And if I were to take another sample, and if I were to call this sample three, and I take the mean of sample three, I'll get something different still. This is 1,533, 34, okay? Um, and so on and so forth. And um, and the text says, not surprisingly, every time we take another random sample, we get a different sample mean. And what we want to know is what values of the sample mean are likely and what are unlikely. And to do that, we are going to build a loop, OK? And so um, before we do this, we're going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this interlude talking about the for loop, okay? And I'm not actually going to bother typing all of this in, okay? So here, basically, we're going to create uh, an object called sample underscore means 50, which says repeat the value NA. NA means um, no value or a missing value 5,000 times. So I'll, go, I'll actually go ahead and I'll do this, okay? So if I say sample underscore means 50, we're going to see um, a whole bunch of NAs. NAs for we don't have a value yet. Okay, and then it says take a sample from area of size 50. So there's 2,930 values. Of those 2,930 values, we randomly select 50 of those, and we call that sample. Then we take the mean of that sample and store it into the first position in sample means underscore 50. So ah, I guess I'm going to run this here. So I've taken, um, so here are 50 random values, and the mean of this is 1,472. And it says, take that mean and store it into sample means 50 
uh, into the square bracket 1, meaning the first position of sample means 50. So if I take a look at sample means 50, it's still a whole bunch of NAs, but if we go to the very first value, we can see that this value 1472.46 has been inserted in there. And we would go through and we would do this. And we would say, okay, well, let's do another random sample of 50. Okay? And take the value from that random sample and store it into the second position. All right? And if I take a look at sample means 50, okay, again, we still have a whole bunch of NAs. Oops but we can now see that two values are now have been populated. So 1472 from before, 1501 from our second sample, and we can go through and do this over and over and over again. But we want to do this 5,000 times, so instead of having to do this in manually 5,000 times, what we do is we build what is called a for loop. A for loop says um, we're going to take the numbers 1 through 5,000, and we're going to do the same thing for every single one of the values 1 through 5,000. And the first time we do it, i is going to be 1, and we will just, you know, take a random sample, take the mean of the sample, and it's going to go into um, this thing for i is 1. Then it increments to i is 2, and it will take a random sample, takes the mean of that sample, and stores it into sample means 50 into position 2. Then it goes to i is 3, takes a random sample, takes the mean of that sample, and stores it into position 3. And it keeps doing that until it gets to, until i is 5,000, it takes a random sample, and takes the mean of that sample, and stores it into position 5,000. Okay. And so I will go ahead and do that right here. I'm uh, avoiding the one that says print i because it's going to print out the number uh, i, 1 through 5,000. And that's just too much stuff. So I'm going to kind of empty out my sample means 50. And I'm going to just run this loop. Okay, And now it is done. And so instead of having a bunch of NAs, sample means 50 has a whole bunch of different random uh, means. It has a whole bunch of means from 50 uh, from random samples. So there's in here there are this represents 5,000 different samples. Each sample has 50 um, items in it and we took the mean of all 50 and we just have one mean for each sample. And because I did this 5,000 times, I have 5,000 different sample means. And it stores it into sample means 50. And so now I can ask, what's the histogram of sample means 50? And here it is. Here is the histogram of our sample means. I might, if I want a little bit more, a few more bins, I can say breaks is equal to 20. And here we go. And this thing looks a lot like the normal distribution. We can see that it's centered around 1500. And um, the averages can go anywhere from 1400 to 1600, really even 1300 to 1700. And, and what this is saying is that when you take a random sample of 50 houses from the data set, and you take the average of all 50 of those things, and we keep track of every single one of those sample means, most of the time those sample means are something between 1300 and 1700. Although individually, if we just took one random house, that um, for the, from the entire population, it could be as small as like 700 and as large as 5,000. Um, here, the sample means, you know, follow a normal distribution here. So that's what that looks like. What we can do is we can um, see what would happen if instead of taking samples of size 50, I took 
a sample of 10? Or what would happen if I took samples of 100? So here, instead um, of size 50, we are going to do samples of size 10 and samples of size 100. I'm still going to do 5,000 different samples. So I'm going to do 5,000 samples of size 10 and 5,000 samples of size 100. I've already done 5,000 samples of 50. So let me just kind of, let's talk through this code. Here I'm going to create a blank um, kind of storage space because I'm going to store 5,000 different means. And we're going to say, we're going to set up this area right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first take a random sample of size 10. So from the 2,930 area values, I'm going to take a random sample of size 10 and call that sample or samp. I'm going to take the mean of that sample and I'm going to store the mean of that sample into sample means 10 in position i. Again, i goes from 1 through 5,000, so that means we're going to do this 5,000 different times. I also go back to the entire uh, vector of 2,930 values in area, and I'm going to draw a random sample of 100. I'm going to call that thing the sample. I'm going to take the mean of that sample and store it into sample means 100 in position i. So the first time I run it, I'm going to put a value in position 1 into both of these objects. Then I do it again for position 2 and position 3 all the way for um, till we get to 5,000. So we would do this for all of these things. Okay, so I have sample means 10, sample means 100. And we'll go ahead and run through all of this code. And so now I have sample means 10. There's 5,000 values there. Okay, and let's just kind of take a look at the histogram here. Uh, sample means 10. Let's take a look. Okay, that's looks like that. And what we notice is that the spread is much bigger. Okay, this I have values as low as 1,000, values as high as 2,000, and it looks like most of them are between 1,200 and 1,800. But if we looked at the previous one where we took samples of size 50, I never saw 1,200. I never really saw 1,800. Well, most of our values are between like 1,350 and 1,650. I would even say 1,400 and 1,600. So the spread is uh, is different. Um, we can what we can do is we can kind of plot all of these together. All right, and so here um, we're going to set up um, an x limit, a a range on our x limits. Okay, so we want to just see what's the smallest and what's the largest values that we see in sample means 10. Okay, and par mf row, this just means we're going to set up um, three, um, three plots on top of each other. So if we look at, um, I'll go ahead and I'll run this code. So this just means kind of the plotting parameters. And x limits, this is kind of the smallest uh, sample mean and the largest sample mean that we saw. Two, the smallest was 1,000, the largest was 2,239. So when we took 10 random houses, we got a mean as small as 1,000, a mean as large as 2,200. And then we will go ahead and we will plot three histograms right on top of each other. First, the histogram for when we took samples of size 10 then when we took samples of size 50, and then when we took samples of size 100. And we'll take a look at that plot. It says figure margins. Here, let me resize this thing because it's complaining to me. So here I have three histograms. This is when I took samples of size 10, and we can see, yes, the values spread out quite a bit from around 1,200 to 1,800. When we took samples of size 50, we're going from about 1,400 to 1,600. And when we took samples of size 100, um, the amount of spread is also, it, 
it gets smaller and smaller. So as our sample size increases, the amount of spread in the histogram gets smaller and smaller. And that's what we see here. Okay. This says if we want to return the um, plotting characteristics, then type in MF row par MF row C11. So I would recommend that you do that as well. And that just kind of resets our plotting parameters. It says, you know, when the sample is larger, what happens to the center? The center, I would say, stays around the same. Okay. If we say, what's the, where's the balance point? It's going to be right around there. Where's the balance point here? Right around here. Where's the balance point? So the center stays the same, but the amount of spread decreases. And, and that makes sense. That's what we did. Um, that's what we observed when we created sampling distributions in class, and, uh, and that's what we have. Okay, so here um, you're going to do something similar on the on your own section. You're going to take a random sample of size 50 from price. Price is going to be very right skewed, and, uh, and when you kind of create a histogram for the population, um, do that. Then it says kind of build a loop and do 5,000 samples of size 50 and compute 5,000 sample means. So you'll kind of follow the same steps for building the loop. I'm going to store that in sample means 50, plot the data with a histogram, describe the shape of this sampling distribution. You know, what would you get? Based on that, what would you guess the mean home price of the entire population to be? So, so here they want you to kind of create the histogram first. And, you know, when you look at the histogram, it looks like the mean of our sampling distribution is around 1500. And based on that, I would guess the mean of the population is 1500. And then it says, lastly, calculate the population mean. And so that, you know, for the area, I would just do mean of area. And indeed, I get something right around 1500. You're going to do the same thing, but for price. All right. And then it says, change your sample size from 50 to 150. And basically do the same type of thing and talk about how that has changed stuff. And, uh, and then answer these questions. OK, again, I would say. Um, create a R markdown file and export it as a Word document so that the diagrams and your text appear. Okay, I hope this uh, kind of makes sense and, uh, and is able to help you get started on this lab.